Welcome back to another episode of the Believe in NFL Draft Prospects podcast. Joe DeLeo and Ryan Roberts, and we've got another scouting report episode for you. We're going to eventually be transitioning to some more positional rankings, some more topical things. That's going to be coming next week, but in a final week of doing some mostly just scouting reports and interviews. Today, we've got two linebackers in the class, Noah Sewell from Oregon. We're also going to do Henry Toa Toa from Alabama. But before we do, though, folks, I just want to remind you about our presenting sponsor, Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source for all of your sports betting this season, everything from NFL playoffs to pro and college basketball, UFC, MMA, and more. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. Watch live betting with live betting op- options, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. Bet Online is truly the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite leagues and events. Head to their website today or use your mobile device to join to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Ryan, we've got. Two fun linebackers today. Uh, I know that this is a pro linebacker show, as you are uh, very interested in talking about linebackers from your past experience of playing the position. And Ryan, two very different guys, though, for talking about the spectrum of play style and size and frame, because Sewell is a freaking massive player and Toa Toa is a little bit smaller, a little more nuanced in a way. Ryan, I want to start with Noah Sewell, though, uh, who former very highly recruited kid at the University of Oregon, listed at six foot two, 253. I don't know if you have a different measurement for him. Saying he's massive might be a bit of an understatement, but he's almost built like a high school guard in a way, the way that he's he's framed up with a very just massive broad shoulders. Um, and there's a, to not many people's shocking, you know, expectation here, a very strong kid, very explosive kid for his size. Joe, the first time I ever saw Noah Sewell was during the Polynesian Bowl when he was a high school senior. And if you think he's big now, you should have saw him then, dude, because he was like a little chunky mm. when he was a high school senior. Like he looked like a – honestly, if you would have told me that he would have been a defensive tackle at that point in his career, I would have been like, yeah, I, I, I see that. I see that. But obviously he's gotten into much better shape during the course of his Oregon career. And I mean it's a – Fascinating backstory. I mean, he's a five-star recruit. He is Penny Sewell's younger brother who's already asserted himself as one of the best right tackles in the NFL, one of the best offensive tackles in the NFL. And he was actually the higher recruit comparative to Penny. Penny was like a you know pretty uh, a modest four-star recruit. Noah was a pretty much consensus five-star recruit coming out. And there were a lot of expectations. I feel like he met them for the most part. And He's been very productive, ultra productive over the last couple of years, but he's definitely a throwback type of player, right? Like he's he's definitely I feel like if we were talking about Noah Soul like 15 years ago, you'd be like Noah Soul's mm. going top 20. Like that's what type of player that I Him and Jack like Campbell both. Yes. I, I even I even wrote that on my note, but no, I don't mean to cut you off. I no, wrote that on my notes for Campbell. Mm-hmm. I literally wrote throwback middle linebacker and to your point, I think both these guys fit that just massive, big, bulky frame that you throw in the middle. But the thing that makes Sewell different, though, is that like he moves way better than most of those old school guys did. Yes, yes. he He's a guy that I think on our preseason show, I compared him a little bit to Bobby Wagner. And it's not like to say that he's quite as good an athlete as Bobby Wagner, but Bobby Wagner was a dense dude coming out of Utah State. Stupid athleticism, stupid straight line speed. And I think that that's what you see with Noah Sewell. Noah Sewell is a bigger version, but I mean, we have projected him to run somewhere in the four five high to four six something range, right? So, like, this kid's a legit athlete, has really good straight line speed, and I think you see it with his ability to make tackles for loss, to create havoc in the backfield, to be able to work sideline to sideline despite being a six two six three two hundred fifty plus pound linebacker. Like, he's a throwback player, but his style is bordering of what is a modern day linebacker in the sense that he is a supercharged version of what you used to mm. see at middle linebacker. So this kid's a dynamic mover for his size. There's no doubt. I think there are some shades of Bobby Wagner's how he plays. Yeah. The movement skills are really unexpected because you yep. see him on the field and you're like, look, I'm going to, I'm not going to beat around the bush and I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to give me shit for this. I mean, he's, he's, he's still kind of chunky. Like he's not, he's, guy. he's yeah. in good, he's in good shape, but, you can see the way that he's built that there is some excess weight that he doesn't need. And frankly, I'm going to be straight up here, Ryan. 
I think he needs to, to, to drop some of that weight. And I'm sure that that is going to be the first thing said to him when he starts his combine prep by the trainers is like, why do you have a gut? Like, what? why are you holding on to this little bit of extra weight? We want you to be lean. We want you to test well. And you're athletic enough to test well. And that little bit of extra weight is holding you back. Again, if you look at him and you see him, you can see that he's still hanging on to a little bit of it. And I would argue, I think if he drops that, that's going to make him even more dangerous as a player because he brings to the table outside of the twitchiness, the explosiveness. He's a really freaking strong kid. He yes. is tough to block and he throws himself at at ball carriers. He is a really strong tackler. He can take some dudes out with his power. Um, that to me is what's scary. If you can maybe get him a little bit faster by dropping some of that weight, getting rid of some of that excess body fat, he could be a super dangerous linebacker at the next level. Yeah, I mean, I think there's increased flexibility needs to happen with him. So, I mean, dropping a little bit of weight is a, a good idea. I mean, there's no reason in the modern NFL for a middle linebacker to be 250 four pounds or 253 pounds, whatever he is right now. I mean, Noah Sola 240 would be great, right? 245. Yes. Like, Because I believe, and again, they're a little bit of a different height variant. So Bobby Wagner is like six, four, six foot, like 240, right? Like 240. So, I mean, Noah Sola getting down to 240, 245 and just kind of trimming up a little bit would probably be a great idea because that's the one quarrel I have with him. It's, well, not the only quarrel I have with him. So so this is kind of my brief thoughts about Noah Sewell, right? He is okay. incredibly athletic, explosive. And I think he has pretty good uh, stop start. Like I think that out of his out of his stance, out of his trigger, I think he can get to top speed pretty quickly. And he's a downhill kid, not afraid of contact, will split gaps, plays at the point of attack. Like he does all those things really well. So he's a traditional box player. But you also see that he can play in space a little bit more than usual. And I actually think he has pretty solid instincts against the pass. I think that he's had sub production in that ballpark, but I think the things that limit him are one, he is super aggressive. So there's some times where when he transitions downhill, he's just going like, he's not going to redirect, get back into his own coverage, get back into the passing game. Like it's just, it's almost like he see, sees red all the time. So that limits some yes. upside as far as being able to redirect in space against the pass. Also, I think that the trimming down a little bit would help the flexibility a little bit because, again, stop starts good, but not. I don't always feel like when he's able to flip his hips and change direction that it is as crisp and as easy to get out of those transitions as possible, right? So I think trimming down a little bit, getting a little more flexible, a little more, a, li a little bit, a little better transitions out of his pass drops, I think would be big for him. And then, I mean, at the end of the day, man, you're going to, he's going to be a little bit of a gambler. He's going to be a little bit of a sees red type of player. But if you could just mm -hmm. ease him back a little bit, because I always say that it's easier to rein someone in a little bit than to make them be super aggressive, right? Like even they have it or they don't, he has the aggressive, which is great. But I think you need to rein it in a little bit and say, no, I know you want to get downhill. I know you want to make a collision. I know you want to make the play. But there's going to be some times where in this league when play action is just going to get you completely out of position. You need to be a little bit, a little smarter with how quickly you tra you get downhill. I don't want to spoil too much when we get to talking about another player, but that's that's kind of why I like Drew Sanders, and we're going to get to him in a little bit because like that's that's something that I heard from my coaches in college that used to uh and i know it was on special teams but like used to emphasize to the full special teams unit punt punt return they used to say if you're going to make a mistake make it at 100 miles an hour yes. because their thought philosophy is give full effort go hard be aggressive and if you make a mistake going full speed we can still work like we can work on that we yep. can improve your decision making we can improve your technique we can improve it's everything so that you can make plays. But to your point, I'd much rather have that than a guy who's lethargic. And I don't think Noah Sewell, uh, that was a concern I had in the summer where some of the games I watched, he looked a tad disinterested. And I didn't get any of that from the games that I watched of him this cycle. I think that that was a lot more obvious. Um, but yeah, I totally agree with you. The one drawback why I admittedly am not willing to commit him as a first round pick right this second is I think that there is a lot of over aggression in his decision making it's yep. like he sees he thinks he sees something on the plays that he makes mistakes and he's just like i'm gonna throw myself 100 miles an hour at that spot yep. and sometimes he guesses wrong and he gambles wrong and that leads him to being out of position and that leads to big plays that needs to be reeled in that's not something that's going to be resolved in his first training camp that's going to take a full season worth of mistakes 
for him to make that correction. So just to sum, sum that point up, yep. I have him right now graded as a second round pick, a mid mid to late ish second round pick behind some other linebackers in the class. Yep. But that I think is a fair spot for him because of the traits. Yeah, and I think I think when we talked about him in the summer, I said that I would be willing to take Noah Soul in the first round. I'm a little I, I called a little bit on him, Joe. So I ended up with a, a early second round grade because I still think that there is a possibility that this kid could be a special football player if he hits in the right situation. I did think though that compared 2021 to 2022, in my opinion, I don't think he took a massive step forward. I still think he was good. I still think he took a nice little step. But I didn't think he took the step that I wanted to, kind of projecting from the summer mm. to his final year. So uh, I'm just a little less uh, – I don't want to say optimistic because I still think he's going to be an excellent football player if he hits properly. But I just think that there's a little more – there's a little more variance to his to his draft projection than what maybe what I thought in the summer, right? Like I think that he's explosive. I think he's physical. A lot of great things, but there's going to be some question marks as far as what his impact and pass coverage is going to be. So I think that holds him back – just slightly. So I like Noah Sewell a lot, but there's still some questions to be answered. Yeah, questions to be answered, certainly for him. Uh, looks like there's a an agreement there on him being a second-round pick 